This demonstration will show how to perform tool compensations to account for process-induced deformations of a composite part. The example is a full-size wing skin with a complex layup including many ply drops and transition zones. The workflow includes geometry, layup, and mesh definition in CATIA, transferring the layup and mesh to Abacus using Compasses Link, handling the layup and mesh in Abacus using Compasses Modeler, predicting process-induced deformations using a Compro CCA simulation where the evolving material properties of the composite are tracked through the entire cure cycle, and transferring the predicted deformed shape back to CATIA using the realistic shape optimizer. So in CATIA, we have the part and tool fully defined, including their geometry, layup, and mesh. If we look at the part only, we can see the original geometry, or arrow surface in this case, and the layup is defined using the grid method. The grid is defined based on locations of spars and ribs, and the layup is defined for each cell within the grid. We can view the virtual stacking here showing some plies that cover the entire surface as well as other reinforced regions. Plies are then created from the virtual stacking using one of the drop-off transition algorithms. As you can see, there are many ply drop-off and thickness transition areas. The mesh is also defined within CATIA. In this case, a shell mesh of mapped quad elements which line up with the grid. Composite link is then used to export the surface mesh and the entire stacking of plies to a .layup file. If we look at the tooling, we can see that the geometry, including underlying support structure, is fully defined in CATIA and is fully meshed with tetrahedrons. The mesh is saved as a .dat file, which can be imported into Abacus. Now with an Abacus, Composites Modeler is used to import the layup file of the wing part. The shell mesh is imported including layup information for each element. Composites Modeler is used to extrude the shell mesh into solid elements using the manual split method. The extrusion creates solid elements with thicknesses based on the number of plies in that region and we can see how ply drops and transitions are handled. Composites Modeler also creates many section definitions which include the layup for different regions of the model. In the section definitions, we can see how the material is specified and the ply orientations are defined. Similarly, Compsys Modeler assigns many orientations in different regions of the model to track ply orientation. With the solid mesh and layup of the part handled by Compsys Modeler, we can assemble the rest of the model for our process simulation. The tooling mesh was imported using a .dat file. The Compro Tools dialog box is located in the plugin directory. This toolbox is used to manage and automate many of the steps required to set up the analysis, run the job, and interpret the results. First, in the Materials tab, we can select from a list of available materials. There are composites, neat resins, tooling, and others such as core material, breather cloth, etc. When added, these materials are linked to the model tree. Next, in the Analysis Steps tab, we can create standard analysis steps. The thermal chemical step will simulate the temperature history of the part the tool and curing of the composite. The stress deformation model will simulate process induced deformations such as springing. Again, once added, these steps are linked to the model tree. Here we can select the active step as we define the rest of the model. So, first looking at the thermal chemical step, the cure cycle is defined as a temperature versus time amplitude, and the heat transfer coefficients for different regions of the part and tool assembly are specified. Next in the stress deformation step, contact properties between the part and the tool are defined as well as boundary conditions to prevent rigid body movement but allow free expansion and contraction. The last step involves deactivating the tooling elements so that the part can deform freely. The analysis is launched from the analysis tab. Here we can manage which steps we want to run. We can also validate the model inputs against recommended best practices, such as element aspect ratios, contact definitions, etc. There is also a feature to launch a 1D thermochemical analysis by selecting an element face on the model and performing a drill through analysis of the layup, the tool thickness, and boundary conditions in that location. This is an excellent feature to get a quick indication of the model behavior before running the full 3D model. Once the analysis job is submitted, we can monitor the progress in the jobs tab and there is a post-processing tab which is used to automatically generate standard plots 
and export the deformation back to Katia. Looking at the results, we will start with the temperature history. We can plot 3D temperature contours at any point in time during the cure cycle. We can also create a temperature history plot which shows the maximum minimum temperatures and maximum minimum degree of cure plotted over time. Next, looking at the stress deformation results, we can plot the deformed shape overlaid over the undeformed shape. The undeformed shape is shown with this white outline. We can also exaggerate the deformation 10 times and show the deformation vectors. We can then export the deformation vectors to a text file using the Compro Tools dialog box. Back in Katia, we will isolate the top surface in the mold. We will then use the digitized morphing command to modify the tooling surface. Here we load the text file that was generated using the convergent utility in Abacus. Shown here is the original and the deformed shape. Since we want to perform a tooling compensation that will negate the process-induced deformation, we will apply negative factor to the skin. This will give us a tooling surface which has been compensated based on the expected deformations. The rest of the tooling geometry can then be updated to reflect this change, and the goal is that a part produced from this tooling surface will fall within the geometric tolerances of the original part design.